Hey, yeah, this is Draw with a quick tutorial on how to add collision to Fallout 4 objects. Um, we're going to do it in 3ds Max 2014. You can also do it in 2013 with this very workflow. What you're going to need as a requirement is this BGS Fallout 4 exporter. You'll get it when you install the creation kit and it automatically drops into Fallout 4 tools NIF exporter. Make sure to install it. When you install it, uh, it'll install automatically into folders associated with 3ds Max 2013 in program files, program files x68 and in app data. If you want to use it in 2014, just manually copy paste all those folders and files into your 2014 folders. Not going to go much into detail here. Let's just get down to business. I want to add collision to this uh, little boom box that I have here. It's a very simple object. It consists out of three shapes. One is like the base frame and then we have uh, another shape. I don't even remember. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, one of the needles uh, that shows uh, the frequency of the radio right behind this glass object that uh, NIFScope cannot load. And that is the last shape here. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Just an object with different shapes. Uh, for an example, why collision? If you don't add collision and you're just going to place this in the game, then it's like a ghost object people can run through. Um, it, you cannot really interact with it. You cannot uh, grab it. You cannot click it. Uh, for many things, you're going to need collision. And that's what we're going to add here. So what we're going to do, we're going to import the object in 3ds Max. Mm, here it is. We don't care about any of these options. We hit import and uh, there we go. Now we have, um, remember the three objects, the three subshapes. If we want to turn it into a collision object, we can only work with one shape or it only makes sense uh, to work with one shape. Now, technically we could just remove all the subshapes um, that are not really relevant in terms of collision or we can just uh, select all go to the hammer hit collapse and collapse selected and it'll automatically merge all the shapes into one here we go now let's continue with the workflow we're going to open the material editor we're going to or we already have the first material up here selected we're going to leave this on default. We're going to click on the standard button here and choose BS Lightning FX. Okay, a lot of arrows are popping up. We're going to ignore them. We're not afraid of them. We're dragging that first material on top of our object. As you can see, it's now all painted white. Now we're going to clone this object. Right click, clone. We're going to select as an object copy it doesn't matter what we name it i name it clone just so we can refer to it later we're going to select both of the objects again the original and the clone two objects selected we're going to hit have a content tools physics create a rigid body with proxies we hit ok now that that's done um we are automatically brought into the second tab modify which is uh, where we need to take action the first the original mesh currently is selected and that's a good thing because we want to give it a mass of 60 kilogram now we're going to click it again because if we do uh, it'll select the clone shape and that clone shape needs to be turned into a mesh as well that is the case if we want to have this a solid static item if we want to have this a clutter item that you can kick around or drop as a go model you leave it on convex hull however if it's a solid item which is what we're going to achieve here we're going to use mesh now we select both of the shapes again we go into the utilities into the hammer option and we're using the collision group settings i have already uh, configured my 3ds max to have the collision group button in here you probably don't so what you're going to do is you click on more find collision group in here hit it click ok and then it'll give you this very menu these options 
again, we still have both objects selected, which is what we need. And we're going to choose a material here. Um, it doesn't really matter what you choose uh, if it's a solid item. If it's a clutter item, it makes a bit more sense to uh, look what comes closest to, uh, to the object material that you have. In this case, I just use metal heavy because, yeah, it's just going to be a, a static block. And as an object type, we choose static or clutter, depending on what we want. Again, we want to have a static item, so that's what we choose. We hit apply to select it. And now both of our objects, the clone and the original, have these objects or have these uh, collision group settings applied. And that's basically it. Now we're going to export our NIF. We're going to choose this NIF format from the original exporter that I showed you. You need to install in the beginning. Don't use the, um, the alternative, the unofficial exporter. It doesn't really work uh, in this workflow. So we're going to choose this one and uh, we're going back into our temporal folder. And I'm going to just name it Boombox Collision. We're going to hit OK here. Again, don't need to worry about any of these options. So we're basically done in 3ds Max, but we're not fully done yet because if we have a look at this. Um, it says B as fade not, and that is a clear indicator that um, this NIF needs to be further processed or else it will show up as an exclamation mark in game. It cannot be loaded. It's not a followed for normed asset. So that's why we have this tool Elric. It also comes when you uh, install the creation kit. And now we're going to convert this collision file. If the checkbox is green, we know everything has worked. My output folder is my download folder, so I'm grabbing it from here, CTRL-X, CTRL-V. And we're going to look into it again, and now we see an i naught. that's what we want to see. Now we know it actually works. Okay, just uh, to show how, how the tree is built up here, we have the an i naught. then we have uh, BSX flex, um, which yeah is uh, defining a couple of things that the model needs to needs to work with, needs to be compatible with. And then we have another nested NI node which then contains the collision object and uh, our shape that is basically the collapsed three shapes that we had um, yeah that we have done in 3ds Max. Now as you can see all the material is lost, it's black, it doesn't really uh, work if you put it like that in game. So what we're going to use this file for is a template to now drop our already prepared shapes in there from the original NIF. Open the original NIF. You see the three shapes here. We're going to grab the first one, CTRL-C, which is the equivalent to block copy branch. We're going to the nested and I not to CTRL-V, which is the equivalent to block paste branch. And we're going to repeat that step with all our shapes. Now, if you have like an object with 50 shapes, that can be a little bit daunting. Um, in this case, we only have three. The last three I have added. The first one is the black collapsed mesh box that we don't need anymore. I'm going to remove this branch. Now, what we're left with is our three shapes, the collision object, the BSS, BSX flex, and we're good. Now we can save this object. One or more blocks have had their name sanitized. That's because we copied blocks in there with the same name uh, as the NI node. It doesn't really matter who cares about names of sub meshes. You never see them in game. Hit OK, and we're done. Now you can use this, uh, yeah, this collision NIF to load up in game and you can properly interact with it and uh, do whatever you want. You can see it's slightly larger than the original because of the added collision data. All right, thanks for watching. Have a nice day. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Bye-bye.